Charlie, I know Charlie from New York because I was there for 10 years. Hi, Charlie. <laughs> so we have a bunch of mutual friends. So there. it's a small, small world. Um, I am currently in a hotel room in Denver, um, ah. representing Austin, Texas. And um, yeah, so I, I, Tracy, thank you for that, that beautiful story. And this is kind of about my mom too. So I wanted to follow with that. Um, it's weird too, because you're used to telling this story to like one person at a time. So this is a, a different experience. But um, so I consider Austin home, but I moved there when I was 15 because I'm originally from a small town in Texas called Shiner, Texas. You might've heard of Shiner Bach, the beer. That's where it comes from. It's only claim to fame. It's like 2000 people. So picture it, <laughs> Shiner, Texas, you know, early, late eighties, early nineties, um, coming of age and sort of coming to terms with, you know, uh, realizing that I liked boys in a place where it was not accepted at the time in the place. And my parents had divorced when I was 10. So I was, and the way it just kind of worked out was that since uh, my mom ended up leaving. And so since, since that was kind of like our established home, we mostly lived with my dad and then spent summers and some weekends with my mom. And she eventually ended up in Austin, which is how I came to know Austin. Um, so yeah, around the age of, of 14 or so was when I really started to kind of not be able to deny it to myself anymore. I've been living this double life, this whole interior world. Of, and it was things, I was doing things that were getting more and more risky, like, you know, placing notes in boys' lockers and <laughs> just doing ridiculous outlandish things. And finally I was like, okay, something's going on here. So my mom happened to be living with an older gay gentleman at the time in Austin and so one weekend I went and I made up my mind he was the only gay person I knew and I was like I'm going to talk to him so I waited until my mom was at work I wrote a letter because I was so nervous I couldn't even speak and I knocked on his door and asked if we could talk and I knew at that moment it was like my heart was pounding and I was like there's no going back you know like and so we went and sat in the living room and I told him and you know he was so wonderful about it and was like you know first thing he did was tear up the letter and he was like I'm, this is our secret I'm not going to tell anyone um, but we talked just about different options and then um, so sweet he actually we we kind of agreed on a place on the in the kitchen bar underneath a placemat he was like I'm going to place some information there for you some pamphlets and some resources for you this was pre-internet so there was like a letter exchange program and a, a, a youth group in Austin, all these different types of resources. So that was kind of like our little thing for a bit. Flash forward to several months, almost a year later, um, I was going to spend the summer in Austin with my mom. And by that point, I had done a few of these letter exchanges and kind of gotten more comfortable, comfortable with the idea. And at that point, I'd made, I knew I was going to live with her for the summer. And I was like, all right. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna. I'm gay, and I'm gonna come out to her. So, we moved into an apartment together, and about a week later, uh, yeah, I we were actually like going to bed. We had this weird apartment where I don't know. I still don't understand it to this day. It was like one bedroom, but with it was like a hotel room. It had the two full size beds in it, and that's that's where we lived. And uh, I came out to her as we were getting ready to go to bed because I just couldn't, you know, wait any longer. And she was like you're not telling me anything I don't already know. And I was like, what? And then she got up all like sleepy and went to the drawer and pulled out this envelope full of pamphlets and like, you know, condoms and safe sex and all this stuff she'd been saving, waiting for me to come out to her. And um, so that actually went really well. And one of the things in there, or one of the things I told her about was from these earlier pamphlets I had was this youth group called Out Youth uh, in Austin for gay and lesbian youth. And she actually like, we took the bus. And so like she went with on the bus with me to help find the place and met the people there. And that was June of 95, which I now call my big gay summer because all of a sudden it was like the doors flew open, the rainbow flags went flying and I made a bunch of friends and they had a, um, a peer sort of counseling group twice a week. So I got to talk about my experience in Shiner, Texas and um, there was, I mean, I made a friend who, you know, showed me the way it was like, he showed me to, you know, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert and AbFab and ABBA and Rocky Horror Picture Show. It was just like gay, gay, gay all summer long. We did makeup. It was, it was incredible. And I was like, 
wow, this is a whole other world. And so um, at the end of the summer, I was due to go back to my hometown to live with my dad. And I was like, hell no, there's no way that's happening. So I didn't exactly ask my mom. I sort of just told her like, I'm going to stay here <laughs> and live with you. And she was like, okay. And we ended up getting me enrolled in school and everything. And so um, she told me, you know, years later that that actually helped kind of turn her life around because she had been in an abusive on and off in an abusive relationship and in and out of drugs. And so when she had to suddenly become a full-time mom again, it, it kind of forced her to look at her, you know, situation and, and get really present and get really active. So it ended up being a really beautiful thing for both of us. And so my memento is from uh, Out Youth Austin. I still have this. They printed some, um, these were like mailers that went out and we did a photo shoot. They asked us to come one day. I don't know if this is backwards or can you read it? It says, love may surprise you. No, um, it's not backwards. Okay, good. See it. So yeah, there's a little, little 15 year old me with hair. And, and this boy's name was Lance. He is unfortunately no longer with us, but he was the first crush I had on a boy who was gay that I knew of. Oh. And, um, that was also, that's all in my journals too, which I was going to bring as my item, but I'm, I'm traveling. So, um, oh God, that big gay summer was also like big crush ridiculousness. And um, I just remember, th I remember this day so clearly because in my Metallica shirt, because <laughs> it was like, we were the ones that were there. So we were the ones doing this part of the photo shoot. And I had this, you know, it wasn't, it was unrequited, but he was so sweet about it. And I had this crush on this boy and we got to you know, take these pictures, these really wonderful, loving pictures. And I kind of, you know, got to feel like what it might feel like to experience that with someone else. Um, yeah. So that was my summer and this is my memento.